Welcome to Jobbed Out, the wrestling editorial that reminds you that we are definitely in the replay era of wrestling. We all know the drill by now. Because of COVID-19, the entire wrestling world's been turned upside down. Shows canceled, Hall of Fame ceremony postponed to the summer, government officials begging and pleading with people not to gather in large groups for leisure. Something that up in Canada was being ignored as recently as this weekend before officials lost their shit. We get it. You don't feel sick and you want a party. But you can still be a carrier and you can still be responsible for somebody else getting sick and dying. That's not the point of this video though. Arguably the hardest hit in the wrestling world has been the WWE. They've had to do closed set shows for a couple of weeks now. No audience, no merch sales, no revenue, and still put together seven hours of main roster programming per week in the build to WrestleMania, which will also be a closed set with no audience, no merch sales, and no revenue. Since the state of Florida is not allowing large gatherings, WWE has had to work skeletal. They've got to bring performers into the center in small batches so that they can record their bits and leave so that other performers can come in and record their bits. Raw and SmackDown have been killing time by replaying moments from major pay-per-views like the Men's Royal Rumble match and the Tag Team Elimination Chamber. That's a shrewd move that I approve of since Raw and SmackDown still see about 2 million plus viewers each every week, and it's very likely that the actual WWE Network specials hadn't even been seen by anywhere near that many. After all, network subscriptions are only at 1.4 mil, and there's no way every single one tuned in for Elimination Chamber. Hell, I did tune in and couldn't watch it. The only thing that the WWE's been doing wrong here though, besides, you know, not planting the audience with staff, crew, and other wrestlers so that you don't have to hear the air conditioning, is that they're not advertising that they're doing this. You don't think people would tune in to watch the Royal Rumble for free? Come on! Put some promotion into it. Anyway, imagine my surprise tonight as I find out the WWE wasn't just recycling old pay-per-views. Enter Leon Ruff. Leon is a performance center enhancement talent from Evolve that's appeared on NXT a couple times, but this week he was fodder for Aleister Black. Now please understand that if I show too much of this match without cuts, I open myself up to copyright strikes, so I apologize in advance for the editing. This is something very, very different when Aleister Black comes into the room. Come on, get up, get up. Al, get up, get up, come on, come on. Oh, and Ruff went in the attack, and now Alistair Black catching his opponent. Ruff went, worked out too well. Black My mass. Gosh. All right, short, sweet, to the point, right? Shouldn't even be a topic of discussion, except I've seen this before. I had to think about it for a second, trying to figure out if I was just suffering from deja vu, because I swear, I've seen this exact same match with the exact same spots, but with different commentary. And it turns out, I was right. This is WWE main event from Thursday, March 19th, only four days ago. Now let me know if this seems a bit familiar. Uh, go head to head with the OC, and this is this is kind of what awkward. Leon should just kick him in the head. He's got an open opportunity right there, right in the face. I don't know. Get him, Leon! Oh, oh. Get him. oh, Leon tried to shoot his shot, and I think Leon's about to get caught. Wings there to Noah. Foul! Oh. Good night. Mr. Ruff. Yep, same match, same spots. I actually thought when I began writing this that they had taken the same canned footage and aired it twice, but there actually are some subtle differences. The referee's positioning, the fire alarm, the way Alistair moves after the pinfall, but that's definitely the same match. You know what that means? They did it twice, one week apart for no reason. And I know, I know, who watches main event, but come on. We're talking five days here. They couldn't have stuck Leon in with somebody else. You couldn't acknowledge that this match already happened last week. Imagine Raw commentary. They could have been having a field day, Spaceball style, going, You know what? Here, let me give it back to you. Oh! Oh, look at that! You fell for that too! I can't believe he fell for the same thing again! The WWE really needs to figure something out after WrestleMania. Hell, they gotta figure something out before WrestleMania because they've been exposing themselves a lot lately. This time, it results in a bit of a laugh, but you can't keep doing this three days a week until further notice in a dead silent room with a literal lack of variety and expect fans to keep their interest. 
Jesus, they should have kept Matt Hardy around another month or so so we can get some House Hardy footage or we could have been going hard on the Firefly Funhouse. You realize that? Just something that won't make WrestleMania feel like the exact same show that we've been watching since mid-March. Ugh, I don't know, maybe it's just me. Maybe it's the stir craziness from all the self-isolation, but what do you think? Was this lazy? Or maybe it was just a funny little blip. What do you think about the fact that Aleister Black and Leon Ruff didn't even change the sequence? Let me know in the comments. For now though, I better get my shoulders off the mat, so thank you for tuning in to Jobbed Out. I'll catch you next time.